Hey everybody, this is the follow-up to how Twitch and Hitbox live streamers get paid. In this episode, I'll be teaching you how you yourself can actually get started streaming. So this right here is Open Broadcaster Software, or OBS. It's completely free, you can download it and use it. It's open source, so you can find all kinds of great mods for it. And this is what I use for all of my streaming. Um, I'm using the 64-bit version. You can use whatever version you'd like for whatever operating system you have. Um, just keep in mind that um, not all mods are made for 64-bit versions, so when you look up mods, just make sure to check which version it's for. I'll be showing you how to set this up for your own live streaming, and all of that good stuff. So I've made a test scene here, just for the sake of this, but I'll be going through how to do all of this. When you first boot up OBS, your screen is going to look something like this, but your scenes will be empty. The first thing you want to do is go to Profiles and hit New. And your profiles are just presets of your settings, essentially, so let's just call this test for the sake of this video. So we're now on the test profile. If we go under profiles, you can see test here. We also have ones for other things that I've already made. And we want to go to settings. So we have our profile here. You can pick whatever profile you want to edit. We want to edit test. And the only thing you need checked off here is enable cursor over projector. This just means that when you're looking at your own stream back, uh, you can have your cursor over top of it so you never lose sight of your cursor. For encoding settings, we want CBR, which is consistent bitrate or constant bitrate, and we want CBR padding on, because streaming sites like to have a consistent um, bitrate going into them, which is how much data you're sending them. The default is 1000, however, um, you'll want different bit rates for whatever quality of stream you're doing. Um, depending on whether you go Twitch or Hitbox, I don't know about other websites. There are a lot of other websites out there, but these are the ones I know the most about. Uh, the recommended amount on, I be believe, both of them is 3,500, which is about 3.5 megabytes per second, or megabit per second, rather, which is a decent quality for most streams. Um, for pro streamers, I'd like to go a lot higher, like I do about 9,000. Um, however, just go with whatever your internet can handle at the time. You can keep bumping this up and testing it uh, to see what you're personally able to handle with your computer and your internet. Codec for your audio, AC, or AAC, is good. Format, 48 kilohertz is just fine. For your audio bitrate, I like to do uh, 192 because most streaming sites cannot handle higher than that. You won't actually hear it on the user end. So although my microphone is in a much higher quality than this, um, when it gets live broadcasted, it will be mixed down to that. And for, st and for channel, you can do stereo or mono. I do stereo. Uh, yeah, supply changes. Let's go to broadcast settings here. You can either do live stream or file output only. That is because that the local recording in this program is actually very good. In fact, I use this to record many local videos for YouTube uh, that I'm not even streaming. So you can make another file set where you just do file output only. I'll be showing you how to do that later um, at least the way I do it. For streaming service, this is a drop-down list of a bunch of streaming services you can go with. You can see both Twitch and Hitbox are on here, which is great. It'll let you know if you're doing something that Hitbox or Twitch doesn't like down here. For your, uh, for your FMS URL, this is a list of servers that that website owns. You can pick whatever one is closest to you or default, where it'll just check before you go live. Like, uh, for me, the closest one would be New York. I live in Ontario, Canada. Play path stream key, if any, this is where you put your website stream key. When you make an account on a website uh, that streams, they'll give you a stream key. You paste this in here, and that'll just tell you, tell the program where to broadcast it, so it's putting it on the correct channel. Auto reconnect is just if you were to lose internet connection or connection to the server during the stream, it'll know that after 10 or so seconds, it'll try to, try to auto reconnect. You can put the timer in right there. Uh, anything you see here that's not checked off, you don't need to check off. Um, keep recording if stream stops. We can have that turned on so that it knows not to just delete everything. Here's a very important one. File path. It's where you want to save it to. Even if you like the default file path, hit browse, and you want to just pick a spot so that'll, that'll say MP4. Normally it saves... I was just... I don't care where it saves. Let's do Marillus action. All right. The way you have to do it here is weird. You actually just click on the bar up here, and I'm going to do Control C to copy and paste it in there. And let's do a dot 
mp4. You could also just type .mv4, but by default it's .flv, which is a flash file, which is a terrible format. Don't do that. Um, you can ignore replay buffer uh, file path. Now, there is an optimized button to automatically set key intervals and stuff in other settings. We'll go ahead and do that. But we'll get to those later. For video here, video adapter is just going to be whatever graphics cards you have. For your base resolution, you can do custom or you can pick a specific monitor. It doesn't really matter. Resolution downscaling. This is if you want to broadcast in a lower resolution than you natively capture it. The reason you might want to do this is, for instance, you have you don't have the internet capabilities to broadcast in, say, 1080p, which is what my monitors are in. Personally, when I broadcast, I actually downscale it to 720. And I believe I go by best detail here. And I do 60 frames per second. The reason you'd want to do this is, um, for instance, over on Twitch TV, it can handle 60 frames per second much better if you put it in a smaller size. On Hitbox nowadays, you can do 1080p with 60 frames per second, but again, it's down to the constraints of your own internet. And you can just say, if you ever have issues um, streaming something, it just doesn't seem to want to work properly, try disabling Windows Aero. That causes a lot of problems sometimes having Windows Aero on, so just give it a try. Especially in Windows 7. I've heard in Windows 8 and Windows 10 that problem has been fixed, however, I can't tell you firsthand. For audio, I recommend not changing anything here unless you want to manually pick a microphone either than what your default one is. And uh, for me, because I have a mono podcasting microphone, I use the Electro Voice RE20 microphone, I force auxiliary mono because normally my microphone is only picked up in one ear of a headphone or one speaker of a speaker set. I actually just mix it down to mono in editing. So this will allow me to record that mono live. For hotkeys, if you want any hotkeys for push to talk or when to start and stop, start and stop the stream, you can here. I don't bother with them. For advanced, use multi-thread optimizations. If you have a multi-threaded processor, which if you're streaming, you probably do. You can change your CPU. Um, was it? 264 preset. The slower you make it, the better the quality. This is very hard on your processor, though, so I'm. Uh, you probably only want to do this if you have a very good one. I tend to go with fast, I believe it is. Um, but again, just try it with, try out whatever you want and see how it goes. For main and high here, I know Hitbox likes high, I'm pretty sure Twitch does too, so if you ever have issues, try it on high. Key frame intervals, you want this on two on any broadcasting website, they want you to have it on two, because it's what lets them have nice screenshots for your uh, stream to advertise it. All the rest of the settings here are just fine for now. Quick sync encoder, we can ignore this. Noise gating on your microphone, we can ignore this. If you have a halfway decent microphone, you aren't going to need it. Uh, scene switcher and server ping are both add-ons that I have that just let me check my connection to servers, and scene switcher allows me to put up hotkeys to quickly switch scenes. So this is all set up just fine. We're going to hit OK. And now we're back to this screen. Let's unmute our microphone on that. No? It doesn't want to? OK. Normally, you would just click here, and it would unmute your microphone or remute it. You can see it like that with our system audio. So this is our system audio. Everything your computer hears will get broadcast on this volume. You can change the volume here or mute it altogether. This is your microphone, whatever you have your microphone set to, you can pick the volume there. You can right click on the scenes when you, uh, when you, menu, to add scenes, and you can add any scene you want here. This lets you quickly switch between a set of sources. You can right click on sources to add a source. This is what they see on screen. So I have Hearthstone in the background right now, and I want to show you guys Hearthstone. So what I'm going to do is go add game capture, because this is a video game. Let's just call it Hearthstone. Not stone. Stone. My microphone's a little bit in the way of the keyboard right now. You can name this anything you want, though. And this will know to look for a game. What games do we have open? Well, it knows the monitor capture might be something, Battle Knight might be something, but Hearthstone is the main one. So we're just going to go with Hearth Hearthstone and hit OK. We can check it on uncheck it here, and we want to preview it. Now, it's going to give us an error because I'm recording uh, this video with another program at the same time, and it'll confuse it a bit, but it'll work fine. On your end, you won't get the error. So we have that. Let's ignore it. And you can see Hearthstone's in the background there. In fact, uh, you can see that because it's always on in the background, I can actually scroll over, and it doesn't match up properly. But um, yeah. 
We have Hearthstone in the background, everything's functioning just fine, it's capturing it, and if we turn on Hearthstone's audio, which I had disabled, you can see a little green bar there, just to signify that it is listening to Hearthstone, so you know that that's working. We'll mute that again. And you can check this and uncheck it. So I'm going to show you a little bit more of an advanced one now that I have. Uh, we're going to go to, let's, uh, let's uncheck Hearthstone, we're going to go to my scene for recording. We can see this beautiful overlay of this drawn picture by, uh, my name is M, I believe, did this one, of uh, a bunch of Pokemon and stuff, and it's got these two big black boxes. Well, whenever I'm playing Pokemon Platinum over on my channel, what I do is, it's a DS game, so I have this beautiful overlay here drawn by my name is M, and uh, you can see these black boxes where this is where the top screen would be, this is where the bottom screen would be, and the way I achieve this is literally just when I'm capturing Pokemon Platinum, I have two different window captures that are of different um, of different sizes that I have dragged around the screen with the edit scene button, which lets me move things around and change their size. So if we go over to test here, let's let's create some kind of makeshift thing like this and show you how it works. I have on my second monitor right now an untitled uh, document in OpenOffice that just says the opening to this video, where I typed it down real quick. We're gonna want to window capture this. Uh, window capture is if you want to capture something on your monitor that is not a game, but you don't want to use monitor capture because monitor capture is really bad and doesn't work very often. Uh, often it really lowers the stream quality badly and just looks awful and is at a very low frame rate unless you turn off Windows Arrow. And if you turn off Windows Arrow, then instead of being at a low frame rate, there's ugly screen tearing, which means the top half of the screen and the bottom half of the screen don't update at the same speed and it looks ugly. We're just going to leave this being called window capture. And everything here, we can see that there is Untitled 1, which I know the document is called. And there it is! You can see the uh, little document of just the intro of the video. Now let's say I want to make this smaller. I'm going to go to its properties and use Subregion, and I can either type in a subregion or select it. What you don't see is on the other monitor, I now have a box that I can drag around to change the size of everything, which I'll show you how that works in a second. Well, let's just do that. And I hit OK, and now it's of a different size. Now here's the way I did that. Let's turn off that window capture. We're going to add another window capture here, window capture 2. This is of Untitled 2, which is in the background right now. This is the document that you can see right back here. Yay! Um, this document. Let's Properties, Subregion, OK. I meant to change that. Subregion, select region. Now you can see what I saw on the other monitor, where it's just this big box where I drag around what can actually be seen. We're just gonna, whatever, that's good. Enter, and okay, and it's been changed to that parameter. We can now edit scene and drag it around or uh, rescale it if we want to, just by, this is just by stretching it rather than capturing a different part. So if I want, I could just make the word uh, Canada really, really big. Let's drag it. English Canada, I'm Canadian, and end that. So you can see here that literally all I did was um, to accomplish this was I uh, made these black boxes over the uh, picture in those spots. I believe I made those. Yes, yes, I made those black boxes over there where the uh, Pokemon Platinum stuff would go. And then I just, with edit scene, dragged them to where they'd be, stretched them to the right, uh, right parameter, and boom. There you go, you have your beautiful looking uh, overlay here. You can, this is how you see overlays with anything on Twitch or Hitbox really, is people just messed around with it like this until it looked exactly how they wanted it to look. It's just a series of imported pictures and window captures and game captures that they dragged around to look how they wanted it to look. Now I wanna show you, let's end the preview there. Normally we just hit start streaming and that would be broadcasting live right now. I wanna show you how I set up my recording one. So let's go to our actual recording one here. Uh, let's actually remove our test one here. I don't need that anymore. And go to recording, settings, all I did differently here. I went to file output only on broadcast settings. And of course, set the file path to wherever I want it. I want it on raw footage. And for encoding, we don't use consistent bitrate because this can be variable. We have a custom buffer size of zero because there doesn't need to be any buffering. We're not sending it to a website. We're locally recording it. And I set my bitrate to 20,000 with a quality balance of 10 because this is being locally recorded in this mode. Um, broadcast settings is file output only, so there are no broadcast settings. 
and I just started doing really high settings. So highest on that, highest on this, stereo, uh, video, I don't downscale it all, do 60 frames per second because it's the best YouTube can handle as far as I'm aware. And yeah, it's basically just the same settings, but making it the highest quality I can. Uh, I could do higher than 20,000. In fact, I think YouTube will, in, f uh, in fact, do 50,000, but none of the games I do really need more than 20,000. So that is how you stream with OBS. That's it for this video on streaming. I hope you found it very useful. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it around online, and subscribe for more videos. If you have any questions or video suggestions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to get around to them. If you have any more time to kill, check out the video on the left of my series Payday 2 101 where I teach players high level play in Payday 2 through build videos, weapon guides, and other informative videos on Payday 2. You could also check out the video on the right of some of my matches in Age of Mythology, where I'm training to be a more serious player. Thank you all for watching and until next time, have a nice day.